Hi guys, welcome back to another product profile. My name's Charlie and today we're diving into something that's set to make a real impact on lighting control and networking, the genetics range of networking nodes from Campsys. Whether you're working on a live production or a complex install, these nodes offer robust and reliable data distribution that makes it easier than ever to set up, configure and operate numerous universes of DMX. To walk us through the range, I'm joined by Tyler Lloyd from Chauvin Campsys. Tyler, it's great to have you with us. Good to be here, thank you. So let's start with a big question. What makes Genetics networking nodes so exciting for the lighting industry? It's the flexibility. The flexibility of where you can use the nodes, the setup, the operation, the configuration. It is a production Tora node or it is an installation controller. We've got the GN2 here. Um, all of our nodes can be powered via the PoE networking port. Uh, that's the same on the 2, the 5, the 10. The 2 also has a USB-C port, so you can power this locally from your device. Um, and on the 5 and the 10, you've got TrueCon in and out for you to then have multiple of these in one rack. All of the nodes have got a um, threaded insert on top of the metalwork. This allows you to put a clamp straight on board and then hang this in your truss or hang this on a scaff bar or dot it around your venue. On the two and the five in particular, um, you do have these screw holes along the top, and these allow you to put a DIN rail mount um, onto the box so that you can then put this into a DIN rail enclosure. Again, more focused towards the installation side than the rock and roll side, but provides multiple use cases and multiple mounting options. As I said, all our nodes use ArtNet and Stream and ACN to carry the lighting data from the console to the node, but there are a number of features that make our nodes stand out from the crowd. One of the main features on all our nodes is the ability to store lighting states. So you can store up to 10 static lighting scenes directly onto a node and then use a button panel to recall those lighting states. So if you were doing a simple bar install, maybe a small nightclub install, or you just wanted the house light control in a major theater, you can have those scenes locally on the genetics node. You don't need a controller in the background. The genetics product is the controller at that point. One of the most useful features is the fallback state. Now fallback, that allows you to come out of one port and into your line of fixtures, and then you can go back from your last fixture into another port on the GN5, 10 or 2. For all intents and purposes, the DMX input and output on a fixture aren't actually strictly tied to being an input or an output. A fixture can receive data on both the in and the out. So what this allows us to do is we are sending DMX data from the output port down to that line of lights and it is coming back. The moment we don't see it coming back on the fallback port, we then start sending DMX data in both directions. So that means if you do have a broken cable, if one fixture goes down, you're not then going to lose all the fixtures beyond that point on the line. You can have, in theory, you could lose no fixtures if it is a damaged cable, or perhaps just one or maybe two fixtures if there is an issue um, with one of the lights. Now, one of the other fantastic features about the GN5 and the GN10 in particular is that on the rear of the product, you've actually got time code inputs using the LTC connector, and you've also got MIDI in and out on the back of the product. This means that you could use the GN5 and 10 locally to say side of stage and have your time code or your MIDI inputs going into that node and then onto the network to any console that can support ArtNet based time code or MIDI messages over the network. So you don't need to run time code over the multi-core cable going back to front of house. Again, everything is going onto the network. It also means that you can share that time code and MIDI messages between multiple consoles if you've got a larger, uh, a larger network with maybe a main and a backup. One of the other fantastic features about the GN2, the 5 and the 10 is that these products act as an unlock to our free of charge software which you can download on your Windows, Mac or Linux machines. As hopefully most of you will know, MagicQ is free of charge for you to download and it provides you with 64 universes of DMX. Now there are a couple of things that we do lock down, uh, none of that is around show programming or show replay and it is mainly focused around external control of MagicQ. If you buy blue hardware, then you get that unlocked. The GN2 unlocks it into what we call core mode, and the GN5 and 10 will unlock it fully. Now there is one other node that I have not mentioned in the range, and that is the GW2i and the GW2o. Both products are the same. GW2i stands for Genetics Warplate Two Port Input, and the GW2o stands for Genetics Warplate Two Port Output. 
Ultimately, just like with all of our nodes, any connector can be an input, an output, or a fallback, but it just allows you to have the right connections around the venue. This node can be built into a single gang UK back box. Uh, we also have them in the EU and US and so on. And they come supplied with both the black and the white faceplate so that you can match the decor in the venue as best as possible. All these nodes are powered over the Ethernet network so that a single cable going to your fixture then provides the product with power and data. This allows you to build these into your walls, your set, your IWBs, and have distributed nodes around the network rather than having only a centralized system. The only thing to mention about the GW2i and the GW2o is that these do not provide any unlocking of the MagicQ system. Now, the final product to mention within the Genetics node lineup is the GN4IP. This is the Genetics 4-port node, and it is in an IP-rated enclosure. This means that you could leave your nodes dotted around the stage, you can power this over PoE or TrueCon, and then you've got four ports of DMX going out to your stage. As well as nodes, within the genetics range, we have a range of switches. Firstly, we've got the GS8, Genetics Switch 8 port. The GS8 is a rack-mountable PoE network switch. It is an unmanaged network switch. It follows the philosophy of Camsys, keeping things simple, working out of the box. This product has got eight networking ports on the front and it supports 200 watts of PoE power directly out from the device. So that means that I could power my genetics nodes, my wall plates, or any other product that might require PoE. That could be cameras, for example. It doesn't have to be in a lighting system. Now the GS8 supports PoE++ on the first four ports. This means that you can send 100 watts of power out of one port. And then the final four ports allow you to support PoE+, plus. that is up to 30 watts of power from each port. The total capacity, as I said, is 200 watts and it works on a first come, first served basis. As well as the GS8, we do also have the GS5 IP. It shares the same enclosure as the GN4 IP, um, but the GS5 IP is again an IP rated networker switch, unmanaged to keep things simple and just work out of the box. Your simple PAR might take three channels, but your very complicated large moving light could take 50, 60, 70 channels, sometimes way more. So you're starting to get less and less capability out of that one cable and putting less and less on the line. It also means as you, these systems get larger, you have to run so many of those cables from your control position to your stage area. That's why Artlet and Streamlit ACN is so important to us within the industry. Using Artlet and Streamlit ACN, those are the two protocols that allow us to take DMX data and push it over on a network. Using those two protocols, you can carry up to 64,000 universes of DMX, and I am not gonna do the math, but that is a lot of DMX channels. Whilst it goes over the network cable, you need devices at the other end to still convert that back to 5-pin. Most fixtures nowadays still require that 5-pin cable going into the back of it. While some are starting to get network ports on board, or the higher end fixtures are starting to get network ports on board, typically we are still running 5-pin to our fixtures. And that's where the genetics nodes come in. The genetics nodes take that network cable in and then split that out into multiple universes of 5-pin DMX. Alongside the GN10, we've also got the GN10R and the GN10P. Now, all three of these products are identical in functionality and size. They are all 19-inch rack mount products. The GN10 has got your 5-pin connectors on the front of it. Your GN10P has got Phoenix connectors, hardwire screw terminals on the rear of the product. So we flip the product around. This is more catered for those that are doing a permanent installation and don't want to terminate loads of 5-pin cable um, if they're never going to be unplugging and plugging it back in. We also have the GN10R, and this has got DMX RJ45 connectors on the front instead. So this allows you then to run the DMX over network cable, again, making integrations and systems, maybe that little bit simpler when running cable and not having to worry about running DMX cable and or network cable. Everything is the same. Now, as well as working as traditional nodes, you may be wondering what's behind me. And this is the Camtis Solutions Board. What we're trying to do is show people how these nodes and these products can be used in you know, environments that are completely different to the traditional rock and roll touring setups. 
So what we've got here is an example of a theatre. We have got the stage area with these lovely 3D printed fixtures. We have got the foyer area, we've got control areas, and we'll walk through how this network goes together. All of this is currently being controlled from a Magic Hue DIN. That's one of the products that I didn't mention that was in the rack earlier on. We do have the MQ rack, and we also have the MQ DIN. The rack and the DIN for all intents and purposes are exactly the same as the MQ70. It's got the power and the functionality that you expect from that console, but it's now in an installation format. The MQ DIN has got these 10 scene button panels directly wired to it. So as I come across and I use these button panels, it will start recalling lighting states. I can control the house lights from this area. I can control the stage lights if I was doing a simple hire of my venue. One of the other really cool things on, the, uh, on all of our Magic Q products is the, the Phoenix connectors that actually take the 10 scene panels into the products. They can also work as a contact closure. Now, one of the other really good use cases for the 10 scene ports, the Phoenix connectors on the back of our products, is that you can wire anything into it using the contact closure. So for example, I've got a light switch on this wall here. And when I push this light switch, I can deactivate and activate that contact closure. We're using this in, for example, like an emergency setup, where it then takes control of all the lights, pushes out the lighting state that you have programmed. And at this point, none of these button panels are actually gonna do anything. They're now essentially, for all intents and purposes, locked out. But as soon as I come back over and I close that contact closure, I have now got control of those fixtures again, using my button panels or the interface to my Magic Cube DIN. Now, one of the other huge advantages to using Magic Cube, and in this installation environment in particular, is a feature that we call Hot Takeover. Hot Takeover is a system within Magic Cube and also Quick Cube, which says that if another console comes onto the network and starts outputting data onto the network on the particular universes that you've got set up, that console can then take control. So in this environment at the moment, my Magic Q DIN is currently controlling my venue. We can see that from our button panels over here. They are controlling the fixtures. But as soon as I come over and I plug in my other lighting console, which is currently running on my MacBook here, as soon as I plug that into the network, all these fixtures are now within my control. So I can quite simply go onto my console and bring that lighting state down. You can see that when I push these buttons here, absolutely nothing happens. The Magic Cube DIN is, is now doing nothing. It is completely locked out, nothing will work. But then as soon as I unplug that console from the network, everything kicks back in straight away. My DIN is now back in control and I have got control using my wall panels. So that's a little bit about how you can use genetics and also our other products like the MQ Rack, the MQ DIN, also the Quick Q Rack and the Quick Q DIN. You can use these products in not just their typical environments of rock and roll, live theater, small amdram. You can use these as controllers in your bars, your hospitality venues, your conference centers, and then allow other consoles to come in and control that. It's worth noting that that console doesn't have to be Camsys. As much as we'd love you to be using a Camsys console at the front end, you could have this Camsys level of control and then bring in any other lighting console that can output data onto the network and that can get control as well. So that brings the video to a close. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, obviously uh, like and subscribe wherever the button might be appearing on the screen at the moment. And the team here at Leisure Tech are always on the end of the phone to give you more information, more advice on what product is right for you. They hold fantastic stock within here in the UK. So do give the guys a shout and ask if you've got any more information. Thank you for watching.